Welcome to the beautiful Marina Del Rey. We are the Robesons and we're here to ask you a very important question. Are you ready to travel? I am. Because in this episode, we're gonna break down how much it costs to travel full time for our family of seven. If you've ever wondered, this is the episode for you. Come along. Is up. That's Eli. That's Isaac. Oh. That's Kate. This is me. Oh, Kate. we're over here making our own food, having some real some good more. fun. People ask us all the time how we can afford to travel full time. And we say, how can you afford not, not to, to travel? travel? I think one of the first things you'll find is that it's actually cheaper to travel if you do it right just take a couple simplifying steps which was a shocker to me actually the cost of traveling would be cheaper than brick and mortar few of you might be considering a different lifestyle a travel lifestyle you might already be in an rv what we wanted to share today were a few points that you can use to consider while making those decisions mm -hmm. i know for me when we were looking at this lifestyle, first and foremost, research. We did a ton of research, so videos like this really helped us, and that's yeah. our goal today. So the first point we wanna share with you, is just ask yourself this question. How are you going to RV? Yeah. Are you going to simplify and start with what you can now, or are you gonna to try to travel and match the lifestyle that you currently have? I know for us, out of the gate, we made up our minds that Less is more. We didn't want to make a decision that would we would want to kill each other after the first week. We felt like we splurged a little bit, but at the same time, we got rid of 90% of our stuff sure. and completely changed the way we live. So for us, it was about more getting on the road with what we could do and what we knew we could manage rather than, you know, the state of the art lap of luxury. There's a lot of choices you have here. You could buy a used rig and get away with absolutely little to no monthly payment, or you could buy new and then there's another set of issues. Yeah, so your overall cost of ownership goes up when you buy new as, as opposed to used. But as far as cost goes, one of the things I know that surprised us was startup cost. Whether you're buying new or used, hoses and cords and storage containers that are particular to your RV. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna get a travel trailer or a fifth wheel? Uh, the hitch for the fifth wheel is more expensive. You need more truck for a fifth wheel. All of those expenses, we underestimated. It was a little bit of a gut punch. You know, we were surprised to how much it cost to, to get going, but overall still a, 
huge cost savings switching from brick and mortar to RV. Some other questions to ask yourself when you're wondering how you're gonna RV. Are you gonna have a washer dryer on board? Are you gonna use the facilities where you're gonna be camping? Are you gonna use solar, a generator? Those are all things that factor into startup costs. So some of the things that we had to get just to be able to live in this space were not expensive individually, like baskets or hooks or what have you, but they tend to add up. Um, luckily, we used a lot of the things we already had, so we were able to do that. But the space is a little bit hard to fit things in. If you want to check that video out, we have, it's episode six. Yeah, it's we'll the link tour. it there. But that gives you kind of an idea as to how to use things that you already have and save some money when it comes to taking a rig. The next thing to consider is where to camp. Are you gonna use Harvest Host, DLM, Cracker Barrel, Walmart? How are you gonna roll? Great choices. <laughs> a campsite is between 20 and $100 a night. If you can hit something between 29 and 49, that's, that's pretty good. I think, as always, it's contingent upon where you are in the country. But just know that there is a cost per night if you are staying just one night. One great option is Harvest Host. We loved Harvest Host and there's so many venues that are included in this cute little membership and it saves you a ton of money. Yeah, under a hundred bucks for the whole year and now you have access to wineries and farms and all kinds of fun things mm -hmm. that for a road schooling mm -hmm. family is very cool. We found what we enjoy most is dry camping um, in little campsites along the way that are next to nothing, very affordable, and you really get the feel of camping in out, outdoor nature. When considering where to stay, if you have the freedom to stay in one place for a week, a month, three months, like we do, you can save a lot of money. Most campgrounds give huge discounts just to, just to block that space and know that they've got a renter. Right. So that is a great way to maintain this lifestyle and not nickel and dime every night paying 29 bucks, 39 right. bucks. So when we, when we stayed at Tidewater in New Hampshire for about six months, we paid uh, in advance and it averaged out to about $20 a night. That's what it cost us to stay there. That's pretty darn cheap for the Northeast. We did have an electric bill. We, of course, had the most expensive electric bill of anyone in the <laughs> <But> campground. <laughs> we got we number one. We expected that. That's right. We knew that was going to happen. Because <laughs> we were running a, a washer-dryer combo and five kids. 24-7. Yeah, and so it's a load every day. <laughs> so our electric bill was right around $100 a month on average. 20 bucks a night. Propane was negligible Nothing. while we were in there. Right. Yeah, it was, I mean, I think one tank the whole time we were there, once we were plugged in and a hundred dollars a month on electric. So that's what we were looking at for expenses for the season. So staying longer saves. One thing that surprised us at the beginning, as we were going through Canada in uh, May-ish, we were surprised at how chilly it was in that particular part of the season and the cost of propane. And you can't make coffee in the morning without propane. <laughs> that <laughs> was very bad. Fuel, diesel, and propane are all more expensive in Canada. Yeah. But we ran a little bit more uh, than we were expecting. So our average bill was about 60 bucks a month on propane when we were hooked up with full electric. Now, if we didn't have full electric, it'd be more than that. Yeah. The cost of this is really going to depend on your rig. We don't want to get too particular. So some rigs require more propane than others. It depends. Most prefer electric. If you enjoy the winter and you like winter camping, just count on spending a little bit more on propane. If you can plan your route to stay further south in the winter, you spend a little bit less. Can you afford to do this? It depends. It really depends. It depends on your rig. It depends on where you are. It depends on the weather that you're traveling in. It depends on how you need to tow your rig and where you stay. There's a lot of variables that will determine if this is actually cheaper for you or not. Our next point is 
food and entertainment. And these are the big budget blowers or savers. Mm. Just like you, at home. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so full-time travel, you want to take in the sites of the part of the mm. country that you're in. But you can do that high budget or low. You can look up the, you know, there's websites in every part of the country about how to do that city or region on a budget or yeah. not. And that was part of our decision. We do keep, try to keep things uh, on a lower budget. However, we do like to splurge every once in a while. And there are some things that you really, as you're traveling, you don't want to miss. Mm -hmm. So whether it's going up in the Eiffel Tower or seeing Niagara Falls from the Canada side or um, going to a special show for a birthday, we wanted to be able to do those special things. So we cut corners where we can and don't where we don't want to. We've talked before about passes such as Ghost City, which are available in cities like Boston, Philadelphia, Los Angeles. We use them time and again to visit historical sites, the Marine Center, and it's worth it. It's good. When you have an RV, you learn very quickly how to cook, how to manage on less. Yeah, and the key is planning and shopping. So the more options you have on hand, the less likely you're going to be to feel like, I gotta feed my kids, let's just go out. Right. You, know, you want your, your family happy. You don't want travel to be uh, something people regret or, you know, people start to get cranky. We don't want that. And so, but we, if we stay ahead of the game and we're shopping well, preparing food well, mm -hmm. then we can pack picnics and we can... Uh, Those are the best. Yeah. So, yeah, the key is simplicity and healthy. And that helps us really maintain a budget. When we always have something on hand, that's pretty simple. Kids are simple. They eat raw vegetables that's all they want they don't want the cooked stuff and they eat fresh fruit yeah and this is pretty good we've done both we we did a super fancy meal overlooking niagara falls it was beautiful and the food was wonderful and everybody had a great time and it was a treat yeah it was but that was that was more that wasn't our regular rhythm yep. that's not how the normal way but we some of the best meals we've had have been on the go at the top of mount major if you want to save money on food and entertainment I would recommend staying at a place longer. So we have the advantage of being in a region for 13 weeks or more at a time. And so that allows us to get to know the area, talk to locals, find out about discounts, coupons, family nights, stuff like that. Whereas if we were only in a city for a weekend, it'd be a lot more tempting to just grab the passes, pay the retail price, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that, that's where the budget gets blown is when you don't know, you don't have time to do the research to find out right. how to have fun, and save money. So the first thing that's gonna affect your monthly cost is whether you buy or finance. If you're able to chunk down and just get on the road with what you've got, you don't have an RV payment, that's wonderful. If you do choose to finance, you're gonna be spending between two and $800 a month on average after 10% down. And that's what you're gonna pay instead of a mortgage or rent payment. But there are some other costs involved there. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have insurance. Your insurance is going to go up a little bit. So you're going to insure whatever vehicles, your tow vehicle. Uh, for us, we travel with two vehicles. The one she's going to take to work and the tow vehicle. And, and then the insurance associated with those vehicles. For us, our insurance cost for all three, the fifth wheel, the truck, and the van, is $279 a month which was a small increase from what we were already paying. Mm -hmm. You can count on your cell phone bill being slightly more because you're gonna eat up more data. You're on the road, so you're not using a router at home. Maybe you, if you're gonna be in a place for a while, you're gonna have a router like we did in mm -hmm. New Hampshire and we do now in Los Angeles. But while you're on the road, all of your streaming is going through your cell. And so you're gonna to have to adjust your data plan. So that's gonna be a nominal increase if you're moving around a lot. Our, our cell phone bill with AT&T went up $50 a month from between when we were not traveling full time and when we began. Fuel is something that obviously depends on the rig, where you're traveling, how far you're traveling. We spent, while we were driving and traveling, about 200 bucks a month on fuel. Is that right? Yeah, on your van. On my van. All right. And we traveled quite a bit cross country. It was fun. And the truck was more than double that. So we did right. have a diesel, uh, a big engine to pull that big fifth wheel. So the truck averaged about $450 a month in fuel while moving. And, and then we just had it a rule that if we were going to go anywhere as a family, the truck stayed and the van <laughs> went. So, so we go the cheap route. That's right. Fuel, 
is another area where the longer you stay, the more you save because you're towing a big rig less often. Mm -hmm. When you're in Canada, you don't know how much you're spending on fuel. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> when you want to be oblivious, just go north. Yeah, it's good not to pay attention to the cost <laughs> of the fuel in Canada. I'm like, what? You'll never want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Food budget. We actually saved quite a bit of money. And of course that changes with where you are in the country. We are honestly not spending that much here in Los Angeles and I expected it to be much more because of the cost of living. However, we are pretty um, consistent with our diet. We're pretty consistent with what we buy mm -hmm. and we know how to buy it. So we save money. As you're traveling, you learn very quickly um, that if you eat out all the time, you spend a lot of money. And it's easy to kind of be on that vacation mode, but you only have to do that for a couple of weeks before you're like, whoa, my pants aren't gonna fit, first of all, and yeah. and I'm spending a lot of money. So very quickly, as you get into this travel lifestyle, you'll learn how to save money on food. The last point we wanna make is really, how can you afford not, not to do this? We spend less money now than we did brick and mortar, but to us, it's not about the savings. That is significant, we, we spend less uh, thanks to renting out our house and mm -hmm. you know the decisions we made to simplify but the real value for us is in the fact of building memories like we're committed now to building lifelong memories for us and our kids and how do you measure the value of that yeah so, it's about we... experiences as we've said before much more about experiences than material things so that is really where we're focused one thing that we're able to do is be location independent for a time being, uh, for half the time. So I work a little, we play a little. This is how we are able to work it out. And that is worth it to us to live a retirement style life now while we have our children with us. They are not gonna be with us very much longer. We know that time is very fleeting. So we are taking this opportunity now and instead of saying oh someday we'll get to that someday i'll get to italy someday uh no we're just gonna do it now and we really yeah. appreciate um, the ability to do that looking back on the first year what's been your favorite thing so far getting to say that i've traveled the usa watching everyone grow has been pretty fun getting closer to everyone um watching myself grow looking back a year ago, I was a completely different person. I know everyone says this, like, I was so different a year ago. This has really helped me grow. Because you really do grow after you do something this huge and this different from your normal lifestyle. Sedona was pretty memorable. Niagara. Um, the night we stayed in Lake Ontario and I remember the picture of Mercy sewing a marshmallow in her mouth and just like not caring. Um, that campfire was really fun. Chinese theater was also one of my favorite things we did. Um, and the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Niagara Falls was awesome. I love just getting through the um, <clears throat> challenges of a new environment and having an RV figuring out how to drive it and so yeah in between Niagara Falls um, and the farm I guess because I love nature. I really like the kayaking and the albacore which was way back uh, was really fun. I love submarines just to go in one that was that big. I really like the adventure of things like albacore and kayaking. Mount Ranger was my favorite but the train ride up Mount Washington was really cool too. Traveling, yeah. drawing, and sharing with all my siblings. Traveling around with all your siblings? Yeah. yeah. You like seeing new cities? Some of my favorite moments in the last year have been the moments when our kids realized how cool travel was. Surfing lessons, being out on a kayak, climbing a mountain, mm -hmm. you know, just listening to the kids, watching their eyes light up and uh, experiencing with them that anything is possible. Uh, some of the historical stuff in Boston and New England was really cool to watch some of the school lessons come to life. And you can just see it on their face. Those have been some of my most favorite moments in the last year.
How about you? What's been some of your favorite moments? I think the freedom of camping wherever and whenever we want to. Yeah. And that's the coolest because it truly is. If you remember that feeling when you get your first bike as a kid and you're like, I can go anywhere. It's kind of the same feeling. That's that's like we're doing the whole Airbnb thing now, but that's what's calling us back to an RV. We're like, we we're all surprised. Like we we're ready to climb back in a small we're like, rig. God gave us an out. Yeah. We don't know really what we're gonna do. We're not saying we're going one way or the other. No. But we are talking about it, thinking about it, looking around, shopping, and just kind of you know, considering because we did love that lifestyle. Yeah. I was surprised at myself with a couple of things. Loving the outdoors so much. <laughs> Great timing. Loving boating <laughs> and um, actually just loving historical places so much that I was moved to tears Yeah, with some of the things that we saw because they hold such significant historic um, weight and value. Yeah. So that is something that I really enjoyed. I do love seeing my children grow closer together. They have a bond that, uh, they've always had a bond, but I feel like they're experiencing and going on this journey uh, and they know it's special. They know this is different. They know that yeah. nobody else gets to do this. So they, they love that and they're sharing in that together. As much as they miss their friends and old routines, they're not in a hurry to get home, which is crazy yeah. to hear them talk that way. You know, they're really loving this time. Yeah. Thanks for joining us this week. We had a lot of fun reflecting on the last year of travel. We can't wait to see what's coming next. Yes, and if this helped you at all, please comment below. We really want to make sure that our videos help you discern and help bring you along in the journey. So. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.